And I think it was really interesting to see when the gladiator, there was two or three times I had to use the winch because the gladiator just couldn't climb the obstacle. And I would, every one of those, the belly was actually scraping. And, you know, if I had 37 inch tires, chances are it would have driven it, but they're illegal in Australia and that's a whole different story. What? So, <laughs> so, so would, would mud terrains have made the difference? It's hard to say, maybe. But but then it's a funny thing of like, okay, so I had mud terrains and I drove the obstacle. So then it's like, why did I even have a winch? It's it, it all <laughs> I feel like it all starts to like <laughs> there's so many different aspects to consider and so many pros and cons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a breaking point in where the net positive, net negative, like enjoyment of things all comes into play. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, like, and cost is a huge factor for me as well. Like that too paying for this trip it was a huge amount of money for me and did i want to just spend more and more money on the vehicle you know like on i would have had to have different wheels and re-gear the axles and bigger tires are more expensive and would have used a lot more mm-hmm. fuel turning bigger heavier yeah, tires the difference between 15 and 10 miles per gallon doesn't sound like a ton because you're still talking you know terrible fuel economy compared to what most passenger vehicles get but that's 15 to 10 is a, a huge difference in fuel when you're covering yep. the mileage that you do. That's right. I, I drove almost 40,000 miles and <laughs> gas in Australia is not cheap. Like probably the cheapest I ever paid over there was like $6 a gallon US. Good Lord. But yeah, that was cheap. Like yeah, often great. it was 7 or $8 a gallon. That's like so, living in California. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, you know, it, it, that is a big, big expense. And so my goal, anything I can do to preserve fuel economy i I want to think about that and focus on that all right so hit us with your three absolute favorite parts places sections of your australia escapade Uh, had to be a wallaby good yeah good (laughs) good luck narrowing this down yeah yeah it's tough i mean (laughs) So, so you've probably heard of the old telegraph track up in it's Cape tough. York in the far northeast corner of Australia. I think it's Australia's most famous four-wheel drive track. And it was beyond my wildest expectations, kind of in more ways than I even realized. It, the four-wheel so? drive is incredible. It's it's difficult. The scenery is beautiful. Um, the people that you meet, the swimming, there's crystal clear swimming holes um these amazing waterfalls oh my gosh sorry yeah we, we drove down that <laughs> is that gunshot yeah. that's gunshot there it is that's okay. me driving gunshot yeah. that's yeah is it is, so, is it as bad as it is made out to be uh yes and no uh <laughs> it, inter it, it depends a lot on the year because the erosion changes a lot of things um mm. the original original gunshot is you can't even get to it anymore because of erosion. So we're driving that thing we drove is kind of 10 Too feet to up. the left of it. Yeah. Um, interestingly enough, as long as you have a good spotter and they line you up, all you have to do is hold your foot on the brake as hard as you can and you just go down in a straight line. It doesn't, it doesn't actually require any skill of any kind. <laughs> so um, <laughs> and you just have to be dumb enough to do it. And then you get to the bottom and you're like, oh, that wasn't even hard. That's how most good stories start though. So. It, <laughs> And then interestingly, there's a couple of chicken tracks where you can drive around it. Everyone we met that did those, though, they got panel damage because they have cor- They look like that, but they have corners in them. And so as you go around the corner, the vehicle tips and hits the bank. Oh, um, no. Mm, mm. So, yeah, okay. gunshot, getting in, that's the easy part. Getting out, um, the Land Cruiser was like lifting tires and we had to run a winch and it was, it was kind of technical, whereas going in... <laughs> It isn't technical at all. Really. <laughs> it's is this smart. Is, is this the exit? Uh that is I think that might be gunshot. Yeah, yeah, that could be gunshot. That looks fun. <laughs> yeah, and that troopy that, weighs like four and a half tons. So it weighs like that looks tons. gnarly. That, that thing looks like it's a lot of weight up top. <laughs> it does, yeah. And we like you could just lean on it and you could feel like it was gonna go over. Oh, We're like, yeah, oh. like, yeah. I feel like I need a guy pulling a Sean Holman, pulling a, a rig down here from the front, like we've seen oh, with him, that yeah. Rover Man picture. <laughs> yeah, and we were. We all, we all jumped on the front of that thing many times. Yeah, okay, so... <laughs> he had a lot of handlebars, so you're good. That's right. Yeah, seriously. So Telly Track was one of the highlights. What else? Tell us Telly more. Track was a highlight for sure. 
Um, the Canning Stock Route, so that is the one. It's a 1,000 miles, the most remote four-wheel drive track in the world. Sand dunes, we saw wild camels every day. Um, oh, it, camels. It, yeah. Oh, cows. It, it, it surpassed my expectations just in terms of the, the kind of the heaviness or the like the seriousness of the whole thing because really all, every day you just get in and drive. It, it's not difficult in commas, but as the days go on and you're like, holy crap, we are really, really far from the world right now. Like, For you to say that, (laughs) it must really be something. (laughs) You know, like other than the satellite beacon that we have in our little grab emergency bag, you know, if the Jeep bursts into flame, we have to get that bag out of the vehicle or we will die. There there Mm -hmm. is absolutely no possible other alternative than we will die. It is not possible. That, that we can get ourselves out of here it's on our own. so interesting that you have an actual go bag in your go vehicle because most people have that in their house, you know, for like shit hitting the fan. Yeah, yeah. And of course, you know, carrying 67 gallons of gasoline. <laughs> on top. There. Oh, <laughs> if it catches so, on okay. I mean, I mean, I had my fire extinguisher, but I kind of knew that it was inadequate. Um, yeah, that, that's a good point. 